Hello everybody, my name is Tiffany, I'm the Tipsy Artist, and today we are going live with our beautiful blessed elephant. Uh, we already have the trace done, and I did do a video of that today so that you can see how I did it. It's a really nice process video, and that is on our video page on Facebook. And then we have all these awesome templates. This one comes with a whole bunch of them. So we've got a little feather. We've got three different sizes of the roses. And then we also have a really cute little sunflower. And then of course the elephant. All right, that comes with our kit with this. And then we have, this is our model that we're gonna go off of today. Just kind of take it back and forth. Nice, okay. All right, so that's our model. Those were our templates that I showed you. We have our paint that comes with the kit. And then of course it also comes with a canvas and it comes with brushes. So this is a look at your brush set too. So, alrighty, so we are all set. We have everything ready to go. And then if you get a little lost on all the supplies and how to set it up, hello, Cindy. Hello, Christopher. <laughs> Welcome. Uh, you can also go look at our website to see a picture of all the supplies that I have too. So you'll see a table layout and everything that it looks like. So that helps make it super, super easy. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and get started. And we're going to start with a big brush first, and we're just going to be working in the background. Now I have a mix of two different colors that I'm going to do today. I wanna to kind of mix it up a little bit with some like light creams that kind of go into like a sea foam green color. Uh, so it's gonna be a little bit different today. It's gonna to be awesome. All right, so I'm going to pick up a nice big dollop of the white, and then a little tiny touch of the gold and I'll push those two together. And then that will give me my little cream off to the side. And then I wanna go ahead and mix up some turquoise now too, so that I can kind of mix back and forth and alternate between those two. So let's talk about how to do that. All right, we've got nice big dollop of white again, and then a little touch of the blue, and then a little touch of the green. All right, so we can mix all of that together. And then if you have our paint kit at home, you could actually just skip the step uh, with the green and just go with a really pretty color we have called Viridian and then just mix that with our blue and our white. And so that makes for a really pretty color. All right, so we've got this little bit of sea foam mixed up and I'm gonna keep all these on hand just in case I wanna kind of, uh, you know, just alternate in with some of those darker colors too to add a nice little touch or something very different in there. So I'm gonna push this brush off to the side in the bucket of water. All right, let's go ahead and go back. I'm gonna use my big daddy today. Hello, my beautiful daughter. Thank you. <laughs> Welcome. I love you, sweetie. Thank you for being here. My daughter London is on today. Everybody say hi, London. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna go ahead and push this color onto the background. So I've got it loaded up with the lights first little bit of light white, also a little touch of that cream. And then I'll push it back and forth in what looks like the letter X. And just push that back and forth. Make sure y'all can see that. Scoot that in a little bit, all right. So again, you it, what, it looks like you make like a letter X. So I'll kind of take it towards you a little bit. It's like this. All right, so hold the brush parallel to the canvas. Looks like you make the letter X. I'm just gonna push that back and forth. And then I'm gonna to start to alternate in a lot of these different colors in here too. So I'll go ahead and push in a little bit of white. And then let's do a little bit of that sea foam color. That's so sweet, Christopher. Thank you for saying hi. <laughs> All right, let's go ahead and keep pushing this back and forth. And I'm really gonna to start to mix it up a lot now really alternate back and forth between so many of these different colors here on my plate. So again, lots of white now. And then let's do a little bit more of that cream. And then just for fun, let's see what just a little dash of blue does. So just barely touch into that cobalt blue and push that into the wet paint and just push that back and forth. And see, that's kind of a fun little accent there as well. And I'm just trying to use a light hand and just push this all back and forth. I'm gonna come in with a little bit more white. 
If I notice that it starts to look too dark or a little bit too uniform all with one, just one color, then I try to come back in with a little touch of something else on my plate to go ahead and add a little bit of variety here in the background. Hello, Rhonda. Hello, Breezy. <laughs> Got new people. Welcome. All right, here we go. Now, I'm going to start to cut in a little bit, and so I want to hold the brush a little bit more like I would hold a pencil. And so when I do that, it makes a nice, thin line edge. So I'll take that all the way around the trunk. And then around this little section here too, the leg, that front leg. And I don't want to forget about this tiny little section here in the bottom. So I'll do a little push of some of that cream and then some of that sea foam color that we mixed up. Now once I've got my cut in work done, then I can just relax the brush a little bit and then hold it more out to the side. And then remember to do that little crisscross stroke just back and forth. Hello, Rolinda. Hello, Ashley. <laughs> Welcome today. I think it is Thursday. Yeah. I am doing very well considering I could not sleep last night and I have been up since about 3 a.m. So I really, really wanted to get some sleep, but sometimes it just does not happen. That's okay. My kids are used to me doing the whole mom's up at 4 a.m. thing. They've heard that a lot, my hubby too, but three is a little ridiculous. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, three? I just, I don't, I really don't want to do that. That's a little bit much. All right, we're gonna keep pushing this in back and forth. And then about 4 a.m., we went ahead and got up, had some coffee. The coffee was so good. Well, a lot of things are really good at 4 a.m. <laughs> so. Yeah, I've been getting these, um, I don't know if anybody else suffers. There's, it's, it must be allergy season. So, really intense allergies that pretty much just woke me up. And nice little pressure headache. I really don't like those, but. Oh well, what are you gonna do? You just have to get up and paint through it. <laughs> so. All right, we're still working in some of that background. Now let's talk a little bit about what I'm doing here too. I'm a little bit sloppy on this and I'm just trying to enjoy the whole process and make it very therapeutic for myself. So that's why I enjoy having the Sharpie in there to begin with. And so what that does is it kind of bleeds through the paint a little bit, which is a really beautiful thing so that you can just relax with it a little bit and then you don't have to worry too much about covering up your design. And I know that this color will very nicely go underneath everything that I will layer on over the top and it will not be hard at all to cover. So I'm gonna go ahead and just kind of lightly place this in between. There's a little bit of bouquet work happening here where the sky definitely needs to peek through a little bit. So I'm just gonna go ahead and lightly brush that through there. Just all right into here. And I don't wanna miss a spot. I definitely want that peeking through everywhere. Okay, I've got elephant happening here, so I'm not going to worry about that little area, but I do need to come in around here, a little bit of sky peeking through here. So I mentioned earlier I did a little tutorial on just the trace. So of course I do talk about doing a pencil to begin with. That'll give you a lot of confidence when you're first tracing, and then you can go ahead and do your Sharpie work over the top. 
Alright, so I've got that kind of lightly feathered in. Again, working back and forth between that beautiful turquoise and sea foam and white. And do a little bit more of that turquoise happening here. So I'm going to add a little bit more blue. Because I sure, that's so beautiful in there. I'm really liking that. So I'm going to add just a touch more out here on the outside. Help that kind of match what I have going on in there. Now, see, this is becoming kind of abrupt in here, so I need to go ahead and do a soft blend on this to help it feather back out. So I'm gonna keep crisscrossing back and forth, and then pick up a little bit more of the white, and just lightly kind of feather that back and forth, feather that in. And the little pitter-patter you hear behind me, it's my little sweet puppy dog. All right. Speaking of fun and interesting animals in your shop, you may see the uh, post I did of the snake, little had a little snake. It was a tiny little snake. Yeah. So we have a little doggy door right here, and I have a feeling that most certainly, if my dog can get through there, uh, so can a little snake. Quite easily, actually. So, I went to pick up a file cabinet. It has two little holes for the handles. And this little snake, it just wrapped around one of the handles. And I thought the handle looked a little strange. <laughs> and uh, a little snake wrapped around there. And thankfully, I don't mean to offend snake lovers, but thankfully the snake was dead because I'm so thankful I did this. I had some packaging tape wrapped around, you know, showing me what year that these taxes were. So poor little thing, he just got right up next to the packaging tape and stuck to it and went to snake heaven. <laughs> so, all right, so I survived and it's all good. There's no more snakes in here, I hope. Okay, so let's see. We have this beautiful background now with sea foam and cream, and it's all lovely. All right, so now what I'm going to do, I'm still working on my color blocking stage. So this is where I push in all of these solid background color. So let's go ahead and do a beautiful light gray in our lovely little elephant. All right, so I am going to get another plate off to the side here, and I want my mama brush. So here is mama. And I'm going to pick up a nice big dollop of white. Let's get another one. And then let's do a little pea-sized amount of the black. All right, let's push that in, and then this will give me a light gray. All right, this is really pretty. I'm liking this. Now, if you want to intensify this and make for a darker gray, you certainly can. Or if you want a completely different color of an elephant, you can certainly do that too. I was just looking at this sweet little elephant thinking it could be bright pink, it could be purple, it could be lavender, it could be orange. I mean, you can make your elephant any color that you want, really. But we're gonna go ahead and go for more of a natural look. So we're gonna do this light gray. And let's see, I'm gonna want a little bit of white off to the side too. So I've got lots of fun things to blend with now. So I've got my white, I've got my gray, I've got my black. And we're gonna go ahead and start with that gray, that middle ground of the gray here. So I'm gonna go ahead and take this into that shape. I'm using the line edge of the brush first. That helps me do the cut in around the edges. All right, so I'll take this all the way around that trunk there. All right, so I've got little twigs coming through here, and so I do want to avoid it maybe just a little bit, so I'll just lightly kind of paint over that. A little bit more pressure so that I know that it will show through. Hey, <laughs> sister from another mister, yes. Hi, Mariah. <laughs> All right, there's our trunk. All right, 
just paint all around this little eye here. All right, now I want a little bit of darkness around the trunk to just really kind of accentuate it. And I want it to have a nice soft blend. So I'm gonna go ahead and do this while the paint is still a little bit wet so that it's not just a really harsh dark line around there. So I'm gonna push back, you know, just back into the black here. And then I'll go ahead and do that line right around that. And see, if I do this while the paint is still wet, you can see how it gets a nice soft fade into that other gray color. So that's really nice. So do the same thing here. And then let's go up here. Now, I don't want to forget that there, but this brush is a little bit too big, so I am going to take my little bit brush here. I'm going to twirl into that darker charcoal color. And then go ahead and come around that curve. And then let's do a, like, a little, looks like a parenthesis, just like that. I'm going to take that, it's the top part. This is the little hole on top of the trunk where the water comes out. And then I'm going to do another one of these, but the opposite direction. All right, so there we go. There's the top part of that. And then, all right, I'm going to give little, this is a little bit, by the way. I'm going to give a little bit of rest in the bath here. And then I'm going to go ahead and work back into the rest of this lovely little elephant shape here. Right, I don't want to disturb the eye. If you do happen to go over it just a little bit, it's okay. You can absolutely finish back up over the top of that with like a, wait for it to completely dry. I think it would, might be easier to do a Sharpie on that, but you definitely want to preserve the white of the eye. Try to be really careful around that area. I'm going to go ahead and work into this area here. I want to preserve this ear line because that little ear that we drew on earlier, we don't want to paint over that because we're going to accentuate that here in just a moment. And this is where the little mouth comes in. Got a neck here. Let's keep working this all the way down. We'll go into the full chest area, and then we'll work into the leg. Right, we'll pull back into the leg. All right. Really nice. Okay, now I'm going to do the ear. Okay, so let's go ahead and paint into that shape. I was thinking, what in the world's going on here? Oh yeah, that's the year. <laughs> hey, I did tell you I got up at 3 a.m., so I might be a bit foggy. Just talked about that ear. All right, so there's that top line. We wanna make sure we still kinda see that. So light painting over the top and then I'm going to come back and re-accentuate that. All right. So quite lovely. So now I'm going to come back in for that thin line of the charcoal gray that will have a nice soft blend into this. So what I need to do, first of all, I'm going to push into a little bit of black, Maybe a little bit more here. All right, so I want to make sure it's thin enough. So I had to go back and apply some firm pressure. It's a little bit thick. You can already, you can see how the, the bristles are a bit spread out, but it's okay. I'm gonna go ahead and go with it. It's thin enough. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and work back into that line there. Still preserving that little tusk. And then we've got a line here. And then let's not forget that little ear line. This gets a little tiny in here. I'm gonna have to get a different brush to make that turn. Yeah, in fact, we're kinda 
going into a lot of small areas. So I have to let Mama go into the bath water here. And then I need a little buddy brush. So here's little buddy. All right, so I need a little bit more black. I have to keep mixing back into the white to blend up this lovely little charcoal color. Firm pressure, I want a nice thin line edge on the end of my brush, and I've got it. All right, so now what I need to do is come in around these tiny little areas. This is a small brush, so it will run out of paint pretty quickly. So you'll probably have to reload a lot. And then I ended up getting into a really tight corner here, so I'm gonna have to come back around with my little buddy. Little buddy can most certainly make that turn and still maintain a nice line edge there. Let's see if that leaf, those are leaves, feathers, I'll leave those alone. And then let's go ahead and firm up this line coming in around the leg. And then here. All right, seeing a little bit of dry brush here, so I wanna go ahead and firm back up this line. All right, I'm feeling good about the elephant. Now I can do a little bit of shading in here too, add a little bit of a nuance of some of those little wrinkles that come into the elephant's body. Now this is an optional step, you don't have to do this. You can keep it very simple. It's a lovely style, just the way it is. And this is really great for beginners. But if you do wanna challenge yourself a little bit and add to the dimension here, you certainly can. So I'm gonna go ahead and do another shade of this charcoal here with a little bit of that light gray. And I'll go ahead and just kind of work here from the top of the trunk down into like a diagonal stroke here. And I just do a very light hand. So I'm coming in from that darker line edge here. And then from there, I'll do like a little diagonal line and then lift off with a light hand. Then I'll echo that same stroke and then lift off with a light hand. Kind of following the direction of the trunk here. That's a, the elephant's pretty wrinkly, so you can add quite a few of these, or just a, a few, just not very many. And then I'm gonna come back in and do a little bit more of a light blending into this. So I'm gonna clean off my brush, dry it off, reload into the lighter charcoal that we mixed up, that really light heather gray. And then I'm gonna go ahead and come right next to that Kind of just soften up this look here. So go back over it one more time so that it doesn't look too garish over the top. Just want a nice soft blend here over the top of that. Okay. So nice soft blend. Okay, so where else? Let's see, we could do maybe a little bit of a line right in here. I'm gonna look at my little model. This is that little cheek that comes up a little bit. And then, keep on out of black. I'm gonna load up with a lot more black over here on the side. A little bit of black though goes a very long way. Hello, Beaver, Oklahoma. Hello, Dina from Beaver, Oklahoma. It is so pretty there. I keep hearing all these good things about Beaver, Oklahoma. But I have not, I don't think I've actually been to that city. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and push in a little bit of some darker gray here. And start to work in a little bit of a shading in here. Right around the edge. Now I'm gonna do a soft blend on that to make it 
blend back in. Right now I'm just getting the initial strokes of this down. So I'm gonna come back in with that lighter shade of gray. And then work into that so it has a nice soft blend. So what I did first is I did that darker charcoal and I first hit this side where that shadow's coming in. And then it just kind of had an abrupt stop to it. So then I came in with that lighter shade of gray and I just worked right back into it while the paint was still wet. And then that gives me a nice soft blended look in there. And then I'm gonna do a few more little lines of this dark charcoal that will come up from here and just sort of run through the shape here of the leg. I basically just follow those same curves and just keep repeating them over and over again. And they're a little bit stark right now, not blended, so of course we need to come back in and do a nice soft blend in between. So I've worked my brush back into that really light, soft gray, and now while the paint's still wet, then I'll work back into that darker gray, and then that will give me a nice soft blend. And then here we go again. All right. And then I'm gonna work in a little bit more of some, just crisscross this out a little bit. A little bit of some darker shade here first. So I'll put that down first. And again, this is that darker gray. Then I need to work back into it. So I'm gonna take that same brush, wipe off those darker shades, work back into that lighter gray, and then let's crisscross that right back into it to do a soft blend into it. So that'll just give you some subtle blending. I'm gonna lighten up a little bit more in here so I add just a tiny amount of white to it. And then I just crisscross the paint back and forth. Lots of soft blending in here. All right, beautiful. Let's do a little sketch here. All right. And then we still have the white here for the task, but what I wanna do there is I, wanted, I want it to be a little bit more painterly. So I'm gonna go ahead and add a little bit of just white paint to that as well. So I'm going to find my little bit brush. So here's a little bit. And I'm gonna do a little twist into some white paint. And then I'm going to work into this shape here. Again, this is the task. I wanna make sure that's all filled in. And then I'll come back in and reinforce this line around it too. Cause I've painted over it just a little bit, but I'll come back in and work that line back in. All right, so that's looking lovely. Now I'm gonna take the same brush. Let's go ahead and do a little twist into that black. And then we want to hit a little bit of an accent here right around the edge. Again, this is my little bit brush. Comes with our little kit. And then, you know what? I covered up a little bit of the eye up here earlier. So let's go ahead and touch that up a little bit too. Yeah, she's got beautiful eyelashes. You can always do that later with a Sharpie as well. Okay, so now we can start to work in beautiful colors for our flowers. And let's see here. I want a pretty big brush. 
for this first step because I'm going to be working in the roses and the beautiful sunflower here. So I like to use a bigger brush for that. And then let's go ahead and mix up, I'll do like a light pink on one of these. So here's some white, here's some red, mix those two together. And let's go ahead and work into this shape here. Now roses uh, in the beginning are just very similar to big lumpy circles. So very easy to freehand actually. We do provide a template, but very easy to hand paint on in the beginning, just in a very free and casual way. Or to even draw on that whole shape. And I'm going to do this one with just a light pink. That's going to be our base. And then I'll do a little bit more over here of that same color. Using the Mama brush. And at first I can turn the handle to where, you know, you can hold it like a traditional pencil. Uh, but when you're trying to work it in over the top, you want to hold it, you know, more over to the flat side to go ahead and give it much better coverage over the surface. All right, now I want some different colors happening. So I'm gonna go ahead and play with some of these different colors in here. Let's do like a light uh, lavender. So I'll take a little bit of the white and then I'll go into the purple, mix those two together. And then we'll do this one really pretty light lavender. So again, this is just purple and white. Purple and white makes lavender. And hello, Angel. And I'm sorry if I didn't say hi to somebody out there. I can't see everybody's name, but welcome everybody. All right, now let's do another purple one here. Hmm. Yeah, let's do a purple one here too. I think I'm gonna go coral up top here. All right, so I'm gonna get a fresh mama and then let's do some coral. So I've got my pink going here with the red and the white. Let's do a little bit of orange with that. And then that gave me some really beautiful coral. So I'm going to go ahead and come into this shape here. That is really lovely. All right. I'm going to let those set. We're just doing our background color for just a moment, and then I'll show you pattern work here in a little bit. Um, let's do a little bit of our sunflower here, too. So I'm going to use a little bit brush and we're, we're going to do some of this bright primary yellow, a little bit of white here. And you can also add like a little touch of gold if you want. And then I'm going to go ahead and position these in all of my little petals. Hello, Lila. Okay, so in each little petal here, they all kind of come to a little point. And as it has a chance to set up and dry, it will let that Sharpie kind of bleed through a little bit. Which is good. And as you blend back in here, you'll notice all of the colors get along pretty well in terms of a soft blend. So if you happen to hit a little bit of this coral or the pink, it'll blend really well with that yellow. Lavender will probably be the least cooperative. It's, it's not as uh, complimentary on that mix, so you want to be careful of that one. But anything else that comes into the mix really is quite nice. So I'm just going to 
push those into the shape here. And again, I'm trying to get to be to where, let's see what I've got left. So I'm gonna do a little, I can hit that later. But I'm gonna expose what I've got here again. I wanna just see where that is. And then what's, what's that, okay. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead. I wanted to see where those were. Sometimes I'm not sure which, what I want to keep out in the foreground. I changed my mind. <laughs> so I'm like, hmm. And that's pretty easy to do. I may even come right back over the top of that, but I wanted to see how it would look either way. Okay, so let's see. I've got, and then that is just a little open spot right there. And I'll be coming back into the center with a darker shade here in a little bit, but I've got really nice highlights over all of this. And then while this is still wet on the sunflower, I do want to go ahead and have a nice soft blend with some lighter colors. So I'm going to go ahead and hit into a little bit of white. And we'll work that into this beautiful primary yellow. And see, while that's still wet, it gets this really nice soft blend. So there's a beautiful highlight that happens. So it's really nice to actually do this while the paint is still just a little bit wet. And then that way it does have that nice soft blend, just a little bit. And I'll keep working this in all the way around. pretty. All right, so we have this beautiful sunflower happening now, and I've got another one, another little flower kind of peek, doing a little peekaboo. Um, I'm going to actually do a different color on that and show you a different technique. So, but I'm going to wait and do that after we do our leaves. All right, so I'm going to take my little bit brush again, and let's mix up a really shade of, a really pretty shade of green. So a little bit, and then we've got a little bit of green, a little bit of white. And I definitely want this to be a stronger contrast to the turquoise background. So I'm not, I, sometimes I do a turquoise leaf, which I think is really pretty, but because we have so much turquoise in our background sky, I want a lot of contrast. So I'm gonna keep these leaves very minty green so that I have lots of strong contrast happening. All right, so I'm gonna do a little twist here into the paint. And all I did was mix up some green and white. And that gave me a really pretty spring green. And I'm gonna go ahead and push this into my little leaf shapes here. And let's do this one here. Now, one thing I'll do that's really fun is I'll probably add in a few little purple leafy stems looking for my words there <laughs> purple leafy thingy bobs i'll put those in there too right over there but just more of this really pretty light spring green take this all the way around now, when you're making leaf shapes, you want to think about making what looks like a parentheses, another parentheses, fill that in. Uh, also, another way to think about it is like making the letter V. See on this one, it goes down to a point and then back up. So it's basically like making the letter V. And if you get a little turned around as you're doing it, for example, this one is the same concept, but it's upside down, so you can even turn your canvas to that direction if that's easier for you. So you try to connect with things that the brain does all the time on a regular basis and that, that helps out a lot. Another little green leaf in here. A little bit more in there. So now that's interesting. I I accidentally, turned out to be a great accident, touched into a little bit of that pure green, but you can see how it created a soft blend. See how lovely that is with that mint green 
you get kind of a soft blend between the two, so that's really nice. So while this is still wet, you can actually come back in with a little bit more of that too. And just barely hit around the outside edges. And softly blend into the rest of the leaf. So let's do another one over here. So at first it's just kind of a harsh green line. Then you can always come back into it with that lighter green and just kind of softly work in over the top. And then that way you'll have a nice soft blend between the two. All right, let's come in with that lighter green in the middle here. More of this really pretty light green. All right, now let's hit that dark green again for these little edges here. And I'll work back into them in just a second. I wanna make sure that I've got them all. If there's one more in here. So now I'm going to go light again. So I've got my same brush that's lighting up quite a bit. Grab more white, push into that light green, and then let's do a soft fade, just barely overlap where you have the dark green, and then work softly into the rest of that leaf. So again, just kind of lightly just overlap it. So it leaves just a hint of that dark green right around the edge, and then it softly blends into the center of the leaf. All right, so we've got some of those really beautiful leaves happening around there. Now we're gonna do some of the bright, beautiful purple that I talked about earlier. So I've got my little bit brush again, and then let's go ahead and do a quick little spin here into our purple. And we still have a little bit of that lavender mixed up too, so it's okay if it kind of grabs a little bit of that along with just the pure purple too. So it's a little bit of both. And I'm gonna go ahead and do this nice little stem here. And then it's that same pattern, little tiny leaves. Again, it looks like you make parentheses and then parentheses, okay? And then you just fill that in. So I'm doing these in a diagonal down to each side. A lot of symmetry on this, whatever I do on one side that I do on the other. Doesn't have to be exactly the same, but just, you know, similar. Just keeps it to where you're not having to think too hard about anything with the design process. All right, and then I've got a little bit of this beautiful little, almost looks more like a feather when I fill it in with some of this purple. Got purple and white. So we'll do a soft little blend of that lavender on the inside. And then let's go really light now with light, light lavender on this one so that you've got contrast right next to the other one. And then I've got that defining line that needs to come around that little feather. So I'll come with a deep dark purple again. And then let's go right around the outside. Okay, very nice. All right, now I've got, you know what? I've got a little bit of some, let's do a little purple leaf right in there too. I'll kind of sprinkle these around, that's fun. Just kind of here and there. All 
All right, now I've got this little flower over here. It's all alone. <laughs> and we're gonna work on that next. So a little bit brush, a clean one. So I'm gonna go ahead and dip into the red paint and then just lay the brush flat. And that makes a nice little petal pattern. So I'll take this all the way around, but you definitely have to lay the brush flat on the side. And I'll just keep taking that all the way around in a circular pattern. All right, now the middle of that flower will be just a little round circle, so I'll teach you a little trick on doing that. So I'm actually going to use a handle of the brush, and then we'll dip into a solid color. Now it can be just a color, or it can be just black. It's also really lovely. I'm gonna show you black today because it'll show up really well. So I take my Big Daddy brush here, use the handle, go ahead and dip right into the paint. You can see on the end of the brush, and then I can just press straight forward. And then there's my little circle. So you can do like polka dot patterns with this technique or like centers of flowers. There's lots of really fun things you can do with this. All right, I'm gonna push that brush off to the side. All right, so now we need to do a little bit of some beautiful pattern work over the top of our roses. So I need to make sure I've got my white, which I do, and my little bit brush. And let's go ahead and start to work in our first layer pattern, which happens with a lot of white so that's our first layer on every color so a little bit here white paint and then I just go ahead and push this on in like little half circles or you can tell your brain it's like making that parenthesis shape but push those little half circles all the way around let's start with the outside first and then keep working those in a circular pattern all the way around the rows until you get to the inside. And you can already see how that's starting to evolve and really change, make it look more like a rose instead of just a bright, lumpy circle. And then I'm gonna do the same thing here on this purple one. Again, little like half circles, keep positioning those all the way around the shape of the rose. Awesome. And take this around. Little half circles. And then keep working it all the way around. Very nice, okay, and then actually let's do one more right there. And then a little bit here. Just kind of lightly sweep that in. Alright, so that is the first layer. Now what we want to do is we want to work in the second layer which will be the darkest shadow. So then I'll come back in with a little bit brush and a darker shade here. All right, so I've got my little bit again and let me need some darker colors. So I'm gonna switch plates and let's see. With the pink, I'm gonna do some red. So I'll go ahead and push into a little bit of red here, just right there on the end. And I'll do a little spot of my red and just kind of drag it and then lift off with a light hand. Same thing here. This is that little shadow right in the center of the rose. And then right there and then lift off with a light hand. All right, and then we just do little half circles. Just kind of lightly drag that around. And it's nice when it does have a, a light little blend, soft blend with that white.
So again, just little half circles all the way around. Do the same thing over here. I'm a little bit more minimal with the darker shadows that come in later. I'm quite a bit more liberal with the white as I position that all the way around. There's a lot more white that I use, but not that much with the darker shadows. And then let's go ahead and hit this with a little bit of a shadow, but this time, since we've got a coral, I'm gonna mix a little bit of the orange with the red. We'll warm up that red a little bit. All right, and just kind of lightly position that around too. Got your little touches of the orange in there as well. This is a time when you can really try to wiggle your hand a little bit. You don't want everything to be too perfect because being a little bit more wiggly or with some people they have a shaky hand and this is actually when a shaky hand is your friend. So let that work for you. All right, so now we need to do the purple. So I had to clean up my little bit brush. Also gonna make sure you dry it off really well. You don't want any excess water in the brush that can create any water runs. I'm gonna dip into that darker purple now. Do a quick little hit right in the middle, kind of lightly pull it off, light hand. So push down and pull off with a light hand and then same thing here. And then I'll do light little accents of those little half circles that come all the way around. And then all the way around here, little half circles. And little half circles. Okay, so we still need to touch up our sunflower in the center. Little sunflower needs a little bit of love. So what we can do here is we can go ahead and we've got all of our beautiful brights done, but now we need to come in with the darks. So again, make sure that your brush is very dry. Well, not bone dry, but it can be moist, but no excess water. So I, as I pull it out of the water, again, just make sure you completely dried off the paper towel because you are coming in with black now and if you do have any excess water, it can create what looks like a mascara run. It'll just run all the way down your canvas. So we do not want that. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and take this brush and just lightly twist it into the paint. This will give me a nice fine point. And then I'm gonna go ahead and just spin this around in a circle. This is that center of the sunflower. Let's we'll start with that and spin that round and round and round. Now you can leave it just like that if you want, or if you want to add a little bit of texture to it, you can take your little buddy brush and just lightly tap into a little bit of gold. See how it's just right there on the end? You'll tap it towards the center of the flower, just like that on the side of the brush. And you'll do it in a circular pattern, almost like you're making a tiny little donut right there in the middle, or like a little Cheerio. And just tap, tap, tap. So that gives you that little bit of dimension that happens with the sunflower. Just a, little, a light little bit of texture, so that was super easy. You just tap that around in a little circle right there on the black while it's still wet, and then that way you get a natural soft blend between the two. Now I'm also going to come back in and do a little light shading in between each one of those little petals. I wanna keep that line subtle, so I'm going to go ahead and push in. You can do this with brown and black. If you're using our paint kit, I would recommend, it's gonna sound strange, but use a cadmium red, which is a really pretty warm red. 
And then also, in fact, let's just do that right now. Because that actually sounds, the more I say it out loud, I'm like, ooh, that sounds prettier than what I'm doing. Because I was going to do something that looked like, well, I really want to say. <laughs> I was going to mix that gold with that black and, um, Looks like something you find your baby diaper. Okay, so we don't want that. All right, so let's do... All right, let's do some cadmium red. Hi, Sunny. Welcome. We're mixing, we're gonna make a little bit of brown, but we're gonna do a pretty brown. All right, so we've got our cadmium red and we're going to do a little bit of some black. All right, so just touch into that cadmium red with a little bit of that black. And this will actually make a very beautiful uh, teak brown. But what's nice is as I come in through the middle of the sunflower petals, even if I have a, a hit of a little bit of that bright cadmium red that comes through, that's going to be a really nice touch here. So I've got the dark shade of the black and the cadmium red, but then if that cadmium red peeks through, then I'm really gonna like that as well. I need more black. Boy, that just really got absorbed quickly. I'm also digging into a little bit of uh, wet paint too, so that's the other thing that's happening. What I do recommend at home for beginners is to go ahead and let all this set up and dry. I have to work quickly when I'm going live, but if you'll let it set up and dry, this is a lot easier on you. That way, when you come back over the top, your paint will just rest right on the top of the surface and not really blend into it. Now I'm going to pick up a little bit of that red, too. I want little red accents. And I think that's really pretty, too. In fact, you can do a lot more of a concentration of red than black even, if you're enjoying the accents of that. So again, this is that cadmium red and a little bit of black. And I'm just defining each one of these little petals here. Now, the other thing you wanna watch out for is on the end of your brush, make sure it does not fill up too much with paint. Bristles will spread right out and then you'll get a big, thick, clumpy line in between there. And we don't want that. We wanna keep this very delicate. So I'll keep taking this all the way around. And then the more we do this, the more you'll notice that you'll really start to see that sunflower just pop right out in front. Make sure I get my nice little fine points up here. There's a little shadow in there. All right, you can also add a little bit of some, I'm gonna come back in with a little bit more red now and do a little bit of a pounce all the way around the inner circle. So again, still using my little buddy brush and see how I've got my red just right on the end. And then I'll just take this as a little tap all the way around. And that'll add some nice texture all the way around as well. And then as you gradually go around, you can also go up a little bit more, extend that pounce into each little petal there. Oops. This, as it, well, one benefit into working into wet paint is that you can get a little bit of a soft blend. And then as you're doing this, make sure you keep that line edge of your brush very thin. And 
And then just keep taking this all the way around. Still just working a little bit of red. And then I will probably come back in and highlight with just a little bit more of a touch of yellow too. Kind of work back into this. You would need to do that anyway if you were working back in if you had a dry, if you let it set up and dry too. All right, so I'm gonna take that same brush and then let's go ahead and pick up just a little bit more of that primary yellow. Dip right into that. And just let's just hit that one more time right in the center. Because what will happen is it will touch into that beautiful cadmium red and it will warm it up quite a bit. And it also gets little tiny hints of that coral that happens too when those two mix. So this is really fun and textural. And you can actually come in a little bit more on the side of the brush too. And just keep going all the way around. I think I played with that enough. I'm going to let that just go ahead and be as it is. And then let's see here. We want to make sure that we do the stems of our bouquet that are coming down. All right, so I need a thin brush. So I'm going to come back in with my little buddy brush here and some black paint. Let's go ahead and push this back and forth. Okay, make sure and check it's nice and dry. We don't want any water runs happening. All right, so actually, you know what? I want a bigger brush. All right, let's do mama. Don't you love how I changed my mind? <laughs> oh, well. <laughs> I do that all the time. Okay, so we want this line to go from here to here. Okay, and then another one here to here. Okay, and I want this to be a little bit thicker the base. So let's add some some thickness there and then just take that all the way through. Same thing, not that thick. Check your end. Make sure the bristles don't pick up too much paint and get too full. But I've got a little crisscross happening there. All right, so that is our couple little branches that come in and connect the whole bouquet. That's what the little elephant trunk is holding on to there. Then, all right, the other thing that you can do, we did some green accents around our leaves, but we can also do little touches of black as well. All right, so let's take our little bit brush again. Let's go ahead and do a quick little twist into the black paint. And then we can actually come around these little leaves, just soft little line. You wanna hold it more like you'd hold a pencil do a little twist into the paint. Nice fine point. And then around the rest of these, I'll just do light little sketches. They don't have to completely connect all the way around. And then if you need some help stabilizing your hand, just watch where you put your pinky, but you can rest your pinky on the canvas and then that will stabilize your hand. It kind of acts like a little, like training wheels or a kickstand on a bike. And again, you want this to be a nice fine point. This is a really delicate line. And it really helps those little leaves just pop right out over the top. 
You can also make some center lines that come into the leaves too if you want. And by that I mean like, for example, like a little center shadow there. It has a little bit of a soft curve to it. It's almost like making a parentheses. line right through the center. Okay, sometimes I have to kind of lean back because the lights really hit it and I can't see. Okay, also I've got this beautiful little purple feather happening here. So I want to go ahead and hit that, the little black line. Make a little center line through there. That'll help accentuate that. All right, and then I have my pretty little feather there. Now my feather, I want to actually do a little bit of some brown. So I've got my cadmium red here, a little bit of that black. Let's mix that together. I'm gonna add, this is really good premium paint, so I can actually add a little bit of water to it. With our student grade paint that you use with me in our regular classrooms, we never add water to the paint. Never needs water. It's just the right consistency, but when you get to a higher quality paint like this, you can actually add a little bit of water to it. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and make that stripe or that chevron rather in the feather, this beautiful color here. It's more of a brown. So I'm going to go ahead and paint into that shape here. And this is my little bit brush. And again, the color here is that cadmium red and the black. And then I did add just a touch of water to it to give it a little bit of some transparency. And then you can also come back over it and add another layer of some of that brighter cadmium red too to kind of brighten it up a little bit. Do the same thing up the top here. Okay. Yeah, I want some I want some turquoise in there. That's gonna be a really pretty complimentary color next to that red. So this is a little bit of that sea foam, but I'm going to add a touch more blue to it. And I'm still using my little bit brush, and I'm going to go ahead and position this into the rest of the feather. And because I've done the Sharpie work in advance, I won't lose my line. That also helps beginners a lot. Speaking of Sharpie lines, um, I did have, I made a video today showing all the tracing. So you can see that on the Facebook page. I'll leave that up there for you. And then I'm going to start making traceables as well for people who just want to do a smaller version of this on just copy paper. All right, so we have our beautiful feather all painted in, but we need to firm it up with black lines. All right, so I've got my little bit brush again. I dried it off. Let's go ahead and spin it into the black paint. We'll do a quick little twist here. That'll give me a nice fine point. And then I wanna go ahead and do a nice little outline around the feather. Now up at the top, I add a few little wispies. They kind of go off to the side like this. And I'll take that all the way around. To a nice fine point, and then I'll come right back in through the center for that center line. And then you can also 
this is an optional step. You can leave it just the way it is, but if you want to, you can accentuate those different patterns in the center, so you can do a black outline around those, too, if you want. Doing a few more of those little wispies right up there at the top will really help it look a lot more like a feather, too. All right, I think I'm almost done. Um, one other little fun thing you can do in your bouquet is you can add more of those fun little white dots everywhere. So let's go ahead and do a few of those. It's kind of a fun technique. So take the handle of the brush, dip into the white paint. You can see how it makes a little white dot right there on the end. And you can just kind of sprinkle these around. So this kind of looks like baby's breath. Or you can do this in a different color and it looks like just another little flower pattern happening. And that one got a light that didn't quite make, so you can go ahead and just redo it too. It's real easy to fix. And I usually put mine on little clusters of three. Okay, I think I'm done. <laughs> All right, um, now we need to go ahead and do, let's see, I think I'm completely done with the painting. Lettering, let's talk about lettering. Okay, so I had, this was my blessed elephant. Of course, you can do any word that is significant to you, that brings you joy, uh, makes you feel better. Or if words that bothers you in a painting, then you don't have to do it. Again, just very optional. Um, I would definitely recommend letting all of this completely set up and dry. And that way you have, well, mine's not, but that's okay. I'm gonna go ahead and work into mine. Yeah, there, finger painting. Awesome. Um, so, but yes, beginners always let this set up and dry. Then that way, when you do come back in with your pencil, you have a chance to manipulate it and reposition it if it doesn't quite work out. One of the things about painting words is they usually get much bigger than you anticipate. So I've seen a lot of people, if they are too free spirited and start to just paint the words on, they can actually get halfway through the word and they're off the canvas. And so that can be a little bit challenging because you have to just completely repaint your entire background. Not, it's not uh, unfixable, but it is, um, oh boy, <laughs> just a lot more painting you get to do. You know, there are no mistakes, only possibilities. Um, but again, it does uh, help keep your spirits up if you just go ahead and do a little bit of planning, I think, and then go ahead and just write this out. So for today, I'm going to go ahead and write the word blessed. That's what I had on the model here. So I'm gonna go ahead and make my little bee. I'm gonna do a kind of this fully fun, kind of decorative bee here. My little L, got my E. And also my type A folks, you can certainly do your ruler and make sure that your line is completely straight. I'm kind of just winging it here. All right, also, you know, this gives you a chance to check your spelling, which is, you never know. Sometimes you just leave out a letter. All right, so here we go. We're gonna take our little bit brush again and our black paint. You can also do this with a Sharpie too. So I'm gonna go ahead and load up again. So I'm gonna do a quick little twist here into the paint. Make sure your brush is just moist, no excess water. You don't want any water runs happening. And then we're gonna go ahead and just follow our line. If you do happen to get a little bit of dry brush, sometimes I think that could be kind of nice. That's actually trending right now in the world of fonts. They actually have fonts that have just intentional dry brush effect. So you can just kind of roll with that. There's also a really fun brush. It's called a pinstriping brush. It's very long and thin, and that makes long scrolling marks. 
I'm going to have to start playing with one of those. I actually don't have one yet. I have a student that comes to a lot of my classes and she's very talented. She's really, she does a lot of commercial artwork. And she's always teaching me things. So she was just telling me about a pinstriping brush. But she said you could do these really, like the scrolly stuff that we're doing here. She said you can use that pinstriping brush. That's pretty awesome. Now, if you have any of the excess pencil marks that are still showing through, then what I recommend there is that you just wait until the next day and then erase those away. But you definitely want to give enough setup and dry time. You don't want to hit it with that eraser. Again, I would just let it set up, set up for like 24 hours just to be absolutely safe. That's kind of overkill, but. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and touch back in there. Blessed, lovely, yay. Okay, so. Now you can sign your masterpiece. And I definitely, if I do it over here in this corner, this is traditionally where it's done, but you just wanna make sure it's super tiny because otherwise it's going to become very busy in here. Or you have the option of just doing your signature right over here as well. But I am going to keep it really, really small. And then if it's nice and dry, I can actually cheat and use a Sharpie. So this is actually much easier to do a signature with. You can also just paint one on too, but you have to use a really tiny little bit brush and then just be very patient with it and do the tiny little lettering at the very bottom here. But I want mine to be really small. So there it is, Tipsy Artist, yay. Okay, we are done. This is very exciting. Okay, so we did our beautiful blessed elephant and we are going to be coming back again, I think tomorrow. I have no idea what I'm painting, something fabulous, I'm sure. So uh, check out our events. I'm doing a lot of painting this weekend. I'm doing, I think, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Uh, and we've got all these beautiful kits that go with it and tons of templates. Let me give you a little visual on that. I'm not gonna show you all of them, but just to give you an idea of how that works. See how that works? Yeah. So there's no drawing ever, and we have all the paint brushes, everything you need online, available for pickup, or we can deliver. No, I did not say that. I did not say that. I didn't mean to. We ship. That's what we do. That's how we deliver. <laughs> we do kind of deliver, but through the USPS. Yes. Uh, so yes, we ship. We have pickup. We have all those fun options for you. And we even have a regular studio show. If y'all are in the area and wanna come see us in Guthrie, Oklahoma, we have one Saturday night too, so we'd love to see you then as well. But for the rest of the day, we're just gonna relax and enjoy this beautiful day. And we can't wait to see y'all again tomorrow at noon. So y'all have a gorgeous Thursday, and we'll see you tomorrow.